Hey, this is Ketil from Green Carnation speaking. Uh, you're listening to the Brutally Delicious podcast. Hey, how are you, man? Hey, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm Bruce. That's my partner, Chris. And you got to settle an argument for you. How do you pronounce your name? Ketil. <laughs> uh, oh, I was not even close. How do you okay. say it? Ketil. So, so the, so the K is silent. It's uh, the first KJ is like a sound that you don't have, I think, but it's the same sound as Germans would use when they say "ich." Ah, I don't know ah. German either, so I'm lost. But welcome, thanks for joining us, man. I appreciate you taking the time. No problem. What's it like over there in Norway these days? Well, we're kind of opening up again now after having quite a strict couple of months. Yeah, due to the obvious um, and. Yeah, uh, summer just arrived, so it's quite nice. What's the temperature? We What's to, the temperature over there? It's like twenty degrees today. Nice. Uh, but wait, but, that's Celsius. So yeah, you got to convert it for Bruce, this, Chris. Bruce, it's about seventy, sixty-nine, seventy. Okay. Six, okay. Six, yeah. So I'm from Canada, so I know Celsius. <laughs> I, I really don't get Fahr- I don't get Fahrenheit very well, but I'm working on no, it. No, me neither. Me neither. <laughs> Fahrenheit's the only thing that makes sense. Fahrenheit makes no sense. <laughs> okay, here's Jetel. I think you'll yeah. appreciate this one. If 32 degrees Fahrenheit equals zero degrees Celsius, that's correct, right? That's correct. Yeah. We can agree on that. So 32 plus 32 equals 64, yeah. which is about 14, 15 degrees. <laughs> but zero plus zero equals zero. So mm. there, there's your argument. Fahrenheit makes no sense. We won. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> anyway, new record is out, I guess, on uh, May 8th, right? <clears throat> May 8th, yeah. yeah, it's yeah been so a, now that it's been out for a couple of weeks, how do you yeah. feel about it? Are you still satisfied with the outcome? Oh, yeah, it's it's been quite amazing. It's the first time we release an album after social media, kind of. We Last time we re- re- released an album in 2006, I think, I guess, we had MySpace, but I can't really remember how, how that, <laughs> how <MySpace>. that was. <laughs> yeah. To, so, was Tom your first fan? <laughs> he was indeed. He was indeed. <laughs> <laughs> right, he was a fan of everybody. Yeah. Yeah, so it's been a bit like, almost a bit like overwhelming because I know about algorithms and stuff, but uh, but but it's been a lot of reincarnation in my in my feed the last, uh, well, since the week before the, the release with the review started coming in and, I've done a lot of interviews and uh, yeah, it's been very positive, luckily. <laughs> What's it like to be putting a record together or releasing a record after what I read, 14 years? Yeah. Yeah, it's been it's been a great pro- process, to be honest. We, we, we came back together in 2016 after 10 years for the Light of Day, Day of Darkness anniversary. So we did a few shows around the world. Uh, and the original plan was to, you know, to feel how it was to play together again and and say that okay we're gonna do these shows in 2016 and then we can decide if we're gonna try and continue making more music and stuff uh and luckily you know the 2016 project went really 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 well uh so we kind of we quite immediately started to you know prepare because we needed a we needed people around us to help us with this you know so we signed sure. a yeah, we signed a publishing deal with with uh, Andy Farrow, you know, the manager of Opeth and Paradise Lost and Catatonia and all all of those bands, right. and also signed um, for the first time like a proper booking agency deal. Nice with a uh, Doomstar in, uh, in in the Netherlands, and then obviously when after having listened to the demos and after having sent the demos to uh, discussed with a few labels, we. We managed to strike a deal with Season of Mist, which uh, we great used label. to work, work with them. Yeah, it's a great label for us. And they've develop, developed quite quite a lot since we, we worked with them the last time, which was in 2002 to five or something like that. Yeah, they've so, come a long way. Yeah, they have really. And uh, it's, it's just positive. So we have signed a long-term deal with them. Uh, actually a five album deal which oh wow this is the first one yeah so we we have a lot of plans the next few years uh <laughs> of course I, I think we need to rethink a couple of the you know time schedules because of the situation right now because we are well we, we were supposed to have been played live now you know so we have oh to yeah back a little bit yeah yeah there's no touring at all 
Like no, are, nothing at all. Are you going to be able to play in even in Norway anytime soon, or are they keeping that still <laughs> closed off? I actually did concerts, not with Reincarnation, but with, with the bass player of Reincarnation and the guitarist on uh, Friday and Saturday. But that was maximum fifty with one meter distance. Oh, I don't wow. know how many feet. I don't know how many feet that is. I that, get <laughs> what a meter is. Oh Bruce. my goodness, Bruce! Bruce, can you turn it for me, please. Sure, it's ten centimeters longer than a yard. Okay, it's it's like, it's like three point two feet. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so there, there are still some kind of strict rules, but but we managed to do that, and it was uh, it was quite amazing to be honest with you, because uh, you know the response from the crowd was was amazing because they've been waiting for this for so long, and hell and yeah, yeah. So we played uh, I think a more than two and a half hour set just because everything was so nice. So that felt, it felt nice. But so that must have been hopefully. strange, right? Everyone's standing there with their beverage, most likely, because you're in Norway. And yeah. and you're one meter apart. You can't talk to anyone. So no. the focus is only on the band. Yeah, that's true. They were actually sitting down. It was that kind of concert. Oh, but wow. They were sitting down around, you know, quite big round tables. So, so you would have a, a good distance anyway. But yeah, it's true. They were focusing on the music only. And that's that's, you know... That's what you want as an artist always, of course. Absolutely. But, but usually when you play in a club, you know, everyone's jammed together and they're talking in each other's ears like, oh, did you see that? Wow. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. now they can't do that. So they're just sitting no. there. No, it's true. Yeah. So that was a nice experience. Um, as I said earlier, uh, like Norway's reopening the country uh, little by little every 14 days. Like we have new rules, which are, as long as uh, the virus doesn't, you know, explode again, which might happen, uh, but I think they have a prognosis now, and 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 they know that it's gonna blossom up a little bit. But but I think the Norwegian government has has it all under control. To be honest, they have enough, yeah, enough capacity on the hospitals and stuff now, and so we're a bit more prepared for something if it's gonna blossom up, right? Than you know, because every everything went really fast in in March, obviously. Yeah, well, they know what they're looking for now. Yeah, true, like true. they've never seen it before. So when it hits, you're like, "Holy shit, what the fuck was that?" Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then you have to learn about it. And now they're like, "Okay, if we do em- enough testing and figure out where stuff is, you know, we can we can take care of it." Yeah, and in my hometown, which is small, well, a hundred hundred thousand, it's the fifth, sixth biggest city in Norway, which says. <laughs> but, but we're only a hundred thousand. But we we haven't had a new case in three weeks now. Oh, that's great. Congratulations. Yeah, well, thanks. What was it like getting out on the stage and actually playing to people? I mean, obviously it wasn't a full house, but just actual people that were there to see you. Was that pretty amazing after yeah, all this time? It was, it was actually. And, uh, and you know, it, it's it's a kind of concert that, like, is it, it's a low-key concert. It's like a, a kind of chill-out concert. But, like, people were shouting and clapping when we got on stage. <laughs> And then, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> like finally, <laughs> <laughs> indeed, yeah. So it was a couple of really nice evenings. That so with Green Carnation, are you guys going to try and do anything like that in Norway? Or um, I don't think so. We did the streaming concert last weekend. Which nice was for us. Um, yeah, we, we were supposed to do you know our first release party for fourteen years on on that date uh, on the twenty third of May. Um, but we were quite early in like realizing that this is not going to happen. So we were one of the first bands actually to announce a live stream concert. And in the meantime, all the other bands in the world obviously had done it. So, but, <laughs> but we did a full production. We did a huge production, a uh, very expensive production. And we ma- managed to break even uh, with uh, up to, I think it was 70,000 70, you know, people uh, or uh, views all around the world. Oh, because- that's great. Yeah, it was kind of turned out. I was thinking, like, why didn't we think about this before? You know, why should you limit this big evening <laughs> to uh, the people in our hometown and the ones crazy enough to travel to come and see us? Yeah, that's crazy. How was that? What was that like playing though? Because I know I saw the Catatonia live stream a couple of weeks ago, and you know they were saying that it was in between songs. It was kind of odd not having yeah a crowd or you know any kind of feedback. They were just like looking at cameras. Did you find it odd doing that? It's the most challenging thing I've ever done as a singer, to be honest. Yeah, I imagine. Uh, you don't have that feedback, right? It's just nothing. Yeah, no so idea. We, we, yeah, we planned our way around it, and we planned not to have any 
any uh, awkward silence during our show. So we we made a set list with sound from the first to the last second. And I didn't talk anything. Uh, so it was kind of an intros- introvert set, but but I that was the way we had to do it in order to to manage to, <laughs> to perform. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine I, that was awesome. What 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 platform did he use to to pull this off? Uh, we did this. Um, uh, you could pay a ticket in advance, only like five five euros or, or dollars, which is yep. very cheap. And we made uh, this um, uh, one and a half hour broadcast with a world premiere on a new single, and we had Simon, the bass player of Leprous. He was like interviewing us and being kind of like a like a talk show host. <laughs> That's <laughs> oh, awesome. nice. Yeah, and we uh, we showed a documentary uh, making of the leaves of yesteryear on that stream, uh, and that was on Vimeo. Okay, oh, cool. so for those for those like me who didn't get to see it because I didn't actually even know about it, is it available? Like people can go still see it? Uh, not anymore. Uh, it was available uh, for a few days after, uh, gotcha. and people were still, still still watching. But we have some plans for the footage and the sound. So so uh, yeah. So, so stay uh, tuned. Yeah, we yeah we pulled it pulled, pulled it away, and uh, but um, yeah, I think it's gonna it's, we're gonna probably use it on uh, like uh, for building up our YouTube channel uh, during gotcha. the summer. Yeah. So I know you don't you don't have an exact answer to this, and uh, we've asked this quite a few to other people. Where do you see the future of the the music business or the the rock world and the touring? Where do you see it going? Do you think it's ever going to be the same, or is it going to have to be reinvented? I think it's it's I think the world is never going to be exactly the same uh both for good and bad I guess because I think like for the environment and stuff um I think you know the the green parties the, the like green parties would have enough enough good arguments for the rest of their lives now because it what this has shown to us is that we can do something about the way we live if we just want right. it you know? absolutely so I I do think that there's going to be some you know I think we're going to use planes a little bit less because uh, you know Zoom and uh, Skype and everything has has shown us that it's we, we I don't think we've taken it like 100% serious previously it's right. like it's it's worth more to to meet somebody in person than online but I think maybe that's a little bit I think we might have changed that in this period a little bit which could be good for for you know, uh, lowering the the number of planes in the air all the time and stuff like that. I uh, keep saying, and I've said a couple times, even on other podcasts that we've done, that I think the amount of creativity and innovation we're going to see at the end of all this stuff is going to be quite amazing. Yeah, I agree. I agree, uh, and it's still, I think, it's still early days. But what you did see quite fast was, especially you know, the music business being really early in in finding new solutions when with the streaming concerts and stuff and and. Obviously, that's going to have to um, – <laughs> somebody told me that uh, she didn't want to open the fridge because she was afraid there was a live stream in there. <laughs> <laughs> I I, gotta, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal that today for my social media update. <laughs> I'm going to be yeah, like, I, I don't want to open my fridge because I'm scared there's going to be a live stream in there. Yeah. <laughs> but in the yes. end, I mean – in the end, like necessity is the mother of all invention, right? And you have to reinvent to kind of pay the bills at some point. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, I think there are some elements, at least, that we're gonna we're gonna take with us from this time. I think there's still gonna be a need for people to physically go to concerts. Luckily, uh, but I do think we're gonna see a combination more. And I've been thinking about quite a lot if if it's possible to do a virtual tour, for example, now in 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 September, October. Uh, but then again. When Europe starts reopening, maybe in September, October, we're going to put a lot of effort into something and people really want to see physical concerts. So it's, I think it's the uncertainty that's my, the most difficult thing right now yeah. for bands. But um, I have that need to see a physical concert. I'm Jones in big time. Oh, yeah. Hmm. But, you know, one thing I was thinking about with the virtual concert, um, you know, you could, you could use a green screen, you know, yeah. and, and really up, like put on a pretty cool situation for people you know Absolutely. each song could have its own situation yeah and and yeah, was, that's not something even... you could do live really true no. true but i was thinking even like with 3d technology and everything that like 
say we could have uh, 200 people in a, in a big venue in Berlin or something. We could be in Christiansand uh, and use uh, like a 3D technology slash uh, green screen. And um, we could uh, have cameras in the, in the venue in Berlin. So it would look actually that we were on the venue. <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. Like I'm, I'm not a very technical person, but, but I think that sounds like a kind of a cool idea, if it's possible to do, of course. Oh, it's possible. Just how much money would it cost to do? That's the problem, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's that. <laughs> right. Damn, there's that little stupid cash always getting in the way of my artistic goals. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Especially when there's not much coming in these days. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think we were, I, I wouldn't say lucky, but uh, I think we were you know, quite happy with breaking even on, on that big show we had because we decided Green Carnation is a more is more band. So people would expect us to do something special. And so we couldn't like just do it with a mobile phone on our kitchen and stuff like that. So so <laughs> so we put a lot of money into the production. And I think, yeah, we're happy about that now because we can, we, can, we have 10 songs now, which, which already sound and look really nice that we can use for, you know, rebuilding the band, with, which is basically what we're doing now because because we're still kind of small online because we were gone when Facebook came. Came so we our Facebook uh, site on um, like uh, Facebook page is just a few years old and it takes so much time to build it up because there's so many you know there's so many of them you know oh yeah right there's so many pages it's not even funny no <laughs> and 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 you get invited to like ten a day so yeah, cool. especially now with all these everybody like you said there's a stream in every fridge you're getting invited to a million of them yeah you do so and, I think the I, market is, market market is gonna adjust itself. You know, because again, it's going to be, I think, the the best quality that will survive. Anyways, that's that's the thing with every, everything. Um, uh, so I think that's going to happen slowly. But it's it's been nice to see that the music business has been able to, to you know, to innovate quite fast. Absolutely. Very fast. Yeah, I agree. Chris. Well, I don't really have anything else. I think this was a really cool conversation, though, and cool. and I like you agree. This is really going to. Um, it proves that if you really want to do something, it can be done. Yeah, you know, you know? That's and that's that's, that's one of the things that everyone's always saying. Oh, you can't do that. You can't do this. You can't do this. It's too politically hard. It's too expensive. And suddenly, yeah, yeah. everyone's forced to do it, and they do mm. it. Yeah, because you have to. I mean, it's it's either that or don't survive, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Which is so. basically which, which is basically the question uh, at the end of the day, like for the world. Um, but we don't really want to talk about that. I've been to some some seminars about the you know the the environmental crisis and stuff, and and it's quite funny that like you know families don't speak about this uh, when they're eating dinner, and why aren't we doing that? Because this is something that's probably going to affect, especially our children's generation, uh, yeah. maybe not, not ours because we're getting old. But uh, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. So it's a I great feel, thing. Hey, hey, hey! Yeah. I'm young. I'm young here. <laughs> I feel I feel really bad for my son because he's a senior this year and he's graduating and you know getting out into the world and it's pretty mm. fucked. Yeah, it is. It is. It is totally. But hopefully, you know, he'll be able to. They'll be, that generation will be able to roll with it and you know take the lead and change this thing around. I, th- I wonder what, what what we would have done the last uh, eight or nine or ten weeks without the internet. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Can you drink anymore? I don't think you can drink anymore or eat anymore. So there would have been happened. a lot of sex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is going to be a baby boom and, and a, a divorce boom, I'm sure. I'll yeah, I bet you're right. In California, they had the re- uh, record for the amount of divorces filed in a week a little while ago. Really? They did, yeah, already. Yeah, in yeah. California, yeah. People were like, <laughs> so, that's it. <laughs> 24 yeah. 7 for two months i can't take it anymore yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. anyway i want to thank you for taking the time man good luck with the record and uh hope we'll catch you sometime soon cheers thank you very much both of you have Be a good well, day man friend. okay cool cool bye-bye bye. bye ever wonder what a punch from elton john feels like or how you cope with having turned down the chance to be in nirvana or what signal keith richards gives when he wants you to get the hell out of his hotel room Fans of Too Much FE Perspective don't have to wonder because they've heard these exact stories and a jillion others on our podcast. I'm Alex Hoffman, former tour manager for Radiohead. And I'm musician and comedy writer Alan Keller. On the TMEP show, we get guests like Nancy Wilson from Heart, 
Jeremiah Freights from the Lumineers, and Modern Family's Julie Bowen to tell us things they may have only shared with their therapist, clergy, or a TMZ stringer. So join us on Too Much Effing Perspective. That's E-F-F-I-N-G Perspective. The only podcast you crank up to 11. <laughs>